Welcome to City Church's On Demand Messages. My name is Josh, and we're so glad that you're tuning in whenever and wherever you're tuning in from. In fact, it's possible that you either stumbled across this online or somebody shared this, and you are leading it maybe for the first time. If you have any questions or want to know more about who we are, we'd love for you to visit our website. In fact, if you, you can even plan your first visit on our website. If you've got kids, we have a kids ministry specifically for them. You can plan your visit. You can go ahead and check them in, learn more about what that will be like. Maybe a middle or high school student, we've got you covered. And so if you have any questions or anything um, that we can do for you, please just check out our website. Today's message is gonna be very special and we're thankful that you're tuning in. It'll be anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. And so if we can do anything for you, please let us know but enjoy today's message. As we jump in today, we are moving back into our series. Last week we had Family Sunday. It was awesome. Brittany and Morgan, who lead uh, City Kids, and our, our next gen, our students, did an awesome job putting together last week's service. We had a, a great panel on stage uh, last week representing just all different generations. It was an awesome Sunday. If you missed it, go back and watch it on Facebook or on YouTube. We'd love for you to check that out. But this week we're jumping back into our series, Built to last. And so over the last two weeks, we have jumped into this idea that relationships get stronger when they are done God's way. So relationships get stronger when they're done God's way. And so we have been addressing in this series the person who is single, dating, married, and we've been talking through this whole concept and understanding that relationships get stronger, they get better when they're done God's way. Because in a relationship, balance and progression is important. No matter what stage or shape or relationship you're in, Jesus shows us how to deepen bonds and better love the people around us. And so our verse for this series is from the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5. And it says this, In your relationships with one another, okay, relationships with others, have the same mindset as Christ. And so specifically, this word mindset takes us and helps us understand it is the basis of how You look at things. And so, in other words, as we're in this series, we're talking about relationships. Our mindset we're going to focus on is the basis of how Christ would function and look at relationships. And so this is where we're moving as we talk through built to last and building to last in relationships. So there's a mindset in your relationship that can lead to life, which means if there's one that leads to life, there's also one that can lead to death. So as we've walked through this series, we've talked about shaping our minds, our hearts around Jesus Here's the five major bonds that we've talked about. So the first two that we've already talked about is to know, right? And so in this week, Josh spent time talking about the fact that God knows us deeply. We're known by God. And so translating that mindset into our relationships, again, whether you're single, dating, or married, is to know, right? To know, to truly know the person. This is the starting place, right? We don't start here at touch. We start at know. And so we'll talk about that in a second. And then we last two weeks ago, we talked about trust. We talked about God being the foundation of our trust before we could truly begin to build up trust in others. All right? And so here is what we've done. So we understand this, that if we're dating, these are things that we build upon. So if I'm dating, I'm single, I'm building on these. All right? So this is the start, and then I work my way across these things. I don't start on this side, kind of like the faders on a soundboard, right? I don't turn up touch all the way, and the other ones are down. No, I start at no, and I build that up, and then I begin to build as we've built through the series these different spaces and places and building these bonds and relationship. And then if I'm married, right, I want to balance in these. Hey, and if you're married in this room, you know that some of these can adjust and fade, but there's an important for, important for us to have a balance in each one of these things. So we have to remember this. As we think about the fader and the first week, Josh had the band on stage, right, and we turned all the instruments down and just the vocals up. And then we turn all the instruments up and the vocals down, and we just saw that it wasn't balanced. The thing that we have to remember is when a relationship gets out of balance, it never self-corrects, right? It's just not going to fix itself, right? You, you, and you know this in any relationship you ever had. If you do nothing, what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens, right? It's not going to just correct itself. And I think a lot of times we just feel that way in relationships. In this room, there's marriages where you're just sitting in a space, and you're just like, maybe if I do nothing, it just will fix itself, right? Ultimately, that's not going to be the space, right? If we don't address these things, if we don't address these bonds, if one of them is off, then it's never going to correct itself. So as we move in today, the first question I've got to ask you guys is where are my Hallmark movie fans? We got any Hallmark movie fans? Guys, don't lie. Put your hands up. Don't don't be lying. Right? All right, where are my romance movie fans? All right? 
Okay, all right. So uh, everybody, that raise their hand. You are the predictable people, right? You like predictability, right? Because, right, every Hallmark movie, most romance movies, right, how do they end? Happily ever after. You know, they, they end with just all the giggles and the smiles and the fun, right? And the ones, let's just be honest, okay? The ones that end and, like, the two don't get together, we hate those movies. Like, we are just like, Why? Like, especially the ones that start, and they tell this good story, like La La Land, I'm sorry to bring it up, guys, and, and it's like, oh, man, this is a great story, and then they don't end up together, and you're like, seriously? Why did you drag me through this whole story, and here we are, and this is, this is where we ended up, right? Why do we like those so much? Because they tell a story, right? And it's a story that we feel like we can get on board with. The Hallmark movies are those quintessential Hollywood love stories, Right? The one where they come together and the story that tells us if you can find that one person, that one person, if you can find that one person, they will complete you and life will be good. This is the same story that many of us have sought, did seek, and still we are seeking even in our marriage now. We want to meet someone that completes us. If we just meet that one person, right? This is what Hollywood tells us. There's one person that can complete you. Some of us right now, we're pursuing this story while others have found that what they thought would be this true story actually is not. (laughs) I love it. Thank you so much. I believe wholeheartedly that church is a place we should be able to smile and laugh, right? Some today are still hopeful, hopeful maybe that in your marriage that completeness will happen, hopeful that maybe as you're dating someone that maybe this person will be the one that completes me, or maybe you're single here today and you're still thinking maybe that person will complete, or maybe one day I will feel complete. But some of us have decided today that maybe just being independent of relationships is best. Why is this the case? Why is it that we push towards this? Why is it that Hollywood, why is it that the commercials, the movies, the TV shows, why is it pushing us towards this completeness that we need through another person? Because when we look at these five major bonds, there's one specifically that affects this idea of completeness. And that word that we'll talk about today is rely. And so rely is this. It's the proving ground for trust. So we talked about last week that you have to build trust. So we have to know someone as we know them. Then we build what we take and we know and we begin to build trust. And when I begin to trust someone, now I have the proving ground to begin to rely on them. They can be a go-to. I can truly begin to rely on the person. The definition of rely is simply this, to depend on with full trust or confidence. Right? This is why it's so important to start with trust first before we move to relying. You cannot rely on someone that you cannot trust. So as we talk about this word, as we talk about this failure in relationships today, whether you're single, dating, or married, the thing that we have to understand is there's two different extremes to rely. And those two different extremes are this. They are, you complete me, and I don't need anybody. You complete me, and I don't need anybody. As we think about hoping someone could complete us, the question that I have for you is, why is it dangerous to look for someone to rely on thinking that they will complete us? You say dangerous, one. Wait, wait, wait. This is what everything tells us. This is what they're showing us. Why would it be dangerous? Here's why. Because completeness was never meant to be found in an incomplete person. Like, let's just be honest. We are all incomplete people. We are constantly changing. We are constantly adjusting. I got a little more pounds than I did when we got married, right? Life changes. We move. We're we're always incomplete. We talked about this last week that we, we see in Scripture that we all fall short. We all are humans. We mess up. We're incomplete people. And so today, one of the dangers of leaning on and relying on someone for completeness is that you're relying on someone who's incomplete. Completeness never happens and can never be found in someone who is incomplete. To those dating or single, you're searching for something that someone cannot give you. To those who are married and you're relying on your spouse to complete you, they never will. Some of you, you feel this already. Some of you have searched, and some in your marriage right now, you feel like something is missing. 
as you rely on another person and they fall short. And that's kind of frustrating, isn't it? When everything around us tells us that if you just have this, then life will be complete. And then when you get there and you're like, no, this is not. This is not like that movie. This is not like that TV show. This is not the story I've been told. And the question is, is it possible that you were expecting from them something that they can never give you? Is it possible that you have expected something from someone that they cannot give to you? If that's true, then the question is, where does completeness come from? Where does wholeness come from? And if I'm working on relying, with, relying on someone in a relationship, my spouse, or as I begin to date and grow in that, what am I working on? And so in Scripture this morning, we'll be in the book of Colossians chapter 2. We find this group of people, we find the Colossians, and we find that they're new to Christ. And we find that much like, much like our situation here in this world, they were being impacted by surrounding beliefs, surrounding thoughts. Everybody had their own idea. And so they're being impacted in their relationship with Christ by outside views. And so as we pick up in this passage, this is what we find. They're new in Christ, and they're being impacted. And so they're being kind of warned by Paul in this passage. So Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8 through 10. I'm going to read all three verses, and then we'll break them down. It says this in verse 8. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. There's so much as we look at these three verses that we need to maybe take a moment and unpack these as we think about how they impact our relationships, as they impact completeness, as they impact how we rely on one another. Understand first that just like today, there were other things that these people were being impacted by. Now, they weren't watching movies, right? They weren't, I mean, maybe they were watching movies, but they were like live action movies, right? They had theater. And so they were even impacted, but they were impacted by these beliefs and these common thoughts that existed in the world around them. Specifically, we see the Colossians being drawn away from Christ and towards the idea that Christ was not enough and that you needed more. The same thing that we have to hear today, that Jesus isn't enough and you need more. And so this is what we find as we look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. So we see in this first passage, don't let anyone capture you. So this phrase, capture you, is not just like hold you captive, but it's actually a little bit deeper. It actually means to lead you away as prey. So not only are we going to capture you and take you away, but we're going to set you up to be devoured. We're going to set you up for loss. You're going to be set up as prey. This is what the thinking of the world can do. It can pull us away and not just capture us, but actually lead us away to be prey, to death. And so maybe just for a moment, go with me for a second. Can we just be honest that maybe the idea of relationship and completeness has been shaping our world to take us away as prey? Thinking that from another person from a husband, from a wife, from a girlfriend, from a boyfriend, that I can receive all the completeness I need and the wholeness that I need. The rest of this passage, we see this as we begin to move further. It says in, in, the, in the middle part, empty, philosophy, empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. Some of you are like, I know what high-sounding nonsense is, and you're like nudging your spouse right now, you know? But this is, this is the thing. It leads you away as prey, but the reason they can lead you away is because it seems highly intelligent. It seems like it would actually function and work, right? You watch the movies, you see them happen, you're like, oh, yeah, that works. They've done that one billion times, and they keep writing the same story, and I keep watching it, and I keep believing it. And it ends the same every time. And so even in this time in history, as the Colossians are facing this decision, is Christ enough to complete my life? They're being drawn away with something that seems intelligent, just like we are drawn away. But the thing we have to understand, right, this is an overpromise and an underdeliver because why? In the rest of this passage in verse 10, excuse me, the verse of rest 8, it says, from the human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. We have to pay attention where the information is coming from. If you're a follower of Jesus this morning, can I just 
ask you this question, where are you getting your information from? Where are you getting your thoughts about what marriage should be, what relationships should be? Let's go deeper, what finances should be like, what health should be like. All these things, where are you pulling your information from? Because this is what Paul's telling Colossians, hey, don't pay attention to that stuff because it's not coming from Christ. And if you're not a follower of Jesus, if you're here this morning and this is the first time that you've been in church, thank you for being here. But I think that you could probably agree with us this morning that there is a constant search all over this world for people to feel complete and whole. And it seems like people just keep coming up empty. And so in this passage, Paul is saying, hey, go to not man, but Christ. This whole thing exists in relationships right today because this is what we find as people are searching and looking. About half of adults under 50 who are single and looking, 53% of those, they're using dating sites or apps within the past year, right? That's not a knock if you're using a dating app or online. That's, it's okay, right? But we have more access in this world to do these kind of things. And this is the statistic that I think maybe helps us understand what people are looking for. And the highest percentage of these are adults age 18 to 29. 75 million active users are on the app Tinder every month. 75 million active users every month on the app Tinder, which is a dating and more, let's just say it that way, site. Why? Because they're looking for something to bring wholeness to life. And the world is telling them, so if you jump on here and you do this, then you're going to feel better. You're going to feel whole. You're going to feel complete. It does not make, take me convincing you this morning, whether you know Jesus or not, that all around our world people are searching. Married, single, dating, or looking to a romantic relationship for completeness, and that cannot offer it. Why? Why do we search so hard? Why, as married couples, do we feel frustrated at our spouse for not being everything that we need and feeling that they are providing us with enough? Again, because you will never be completed by an incomplete person. Two incomplete people getting married make an incomplete marriage. Right? Two incomplete people getting married make an incomplete marriage. That's why when Jesus does math and he talks about marriage, he says, and the two became one. One plus one does not equal one, but according to God's math, they make one. Because what we're going to discover here is that oneness is held to completion through Christ. Two incomplete people make one incomplete marriage. Completeness only can come from the one who is complete. This is what we find in verse number nine as we continue in the passage of Colossians. So Paul begins to point them towards where they can find this complete. For Christ, in Christ lives, where can we rely? Where can we rely on this completeness? For in Christ lives all the fullness of God. So as we think about all the fullness of God, this is what Paul's reminding them is Christ is fully God, right? Everything that they were being told is that Christ is not enough because of this, this, this. And Paul's just making this statement that Christ is fully God. Like he is God. And so then he continues on and we find this and he says in verse 10, so you also are complete and this word complete, I love this word. And here it is. Why can I rely? Because I will be filled to the fullest. The word complete means filled to the fullest. So how can I rely on Christ? Because he's the one who can actually fill me to the fullest. And how do I rely on him? It says in the next part of this passage, through my union with Christ. The word union means this common relationship where I seek actively to know him more and for him to know me more. Then I have this ability to rely on someone who is complete and can fill me fully. Jesus plus none, nothing, Jesus minus nothing, you are complete in him. And let's be honest, I think if, if we were all honest, we, we feel like we have to earn that. We have, if, if I'm going to rely on Christ, there must be some earning on my part, right? You feel that maybe even in your relationships, like, I mean, all right, if I'm going to feel full or complete by my spouse and rely on them for this, i got to earn these things. But the beautiful part about who Jesus is and what is offered is your completeness in Christ is a fact to be enjoyed, not a status to be achieved. You don't, you don't have to achieve it. It's just to be enjoyed. You just get to enjoy and rely on the fullness of Christ. Wouldn't it be just such a difference in our relationships if this is where we went first? And I began to rely 
on the fullness of Jesus and the completeness of Jesus, knowing that I needed nothing else but him first. This is why we see scripture tell us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now and forever, completeness through Christ shows that other ideas are unnecessary to complete you. It's, it's probably a hard space to sit in when I say this because I, I get it. I'm married, and uh, my wife and I are going on 19 years this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Yep. You should, you should definitely be applauding her, guys. Give her a big hand because, wow, 19 years with me. I mean, I lost my hair, and, you know, I used to have hair down on my shoulders. I'm not bitter about it at all. Um, you know, I... I think that if we were truthfully honest, that for me to say this seems so wrong. But it's the truth that we need to sit on. I am complete through Jesus, not through my wife. Not because I don't love her. Not because... She doesn't bring joy into my life. But because if I spend my entire marriage expecting her to give something that Jesus can only give me, it's unfair to her and I'm going to be miserable. Wives, if you're looking for something from your husband that only Jesus can do, you're going to be miserable. And you're going to blame him. Husbands, you're going to blame her. And this whole time, Jesus is saying, I have everything you need to rely on and find wholeness and completion. So let me ask you, what are you depending on them for? If you're dating in here, when I tell you this, you are complete and have enough in Jesus. Is it hard for you to grasp? If you're single, I know the truth in this room is we have people who have been through marriage and have been through divorce. Man, I just want to tell you that God sees you. He loves you. He knows you. His grace is sufficient. His healing is wonderful. He's not done. But understand that in him you are complete enough. How then must we love someone? How then must we love someone? If my completeness and my relying starts with Jesus, how do I begin to love someone and begin to rely on someone in my marriage? Because this is where we're at, right? How to rely on someone in my marriage? How do I rely on someone in a relationship? Here's what we have to understand. That when Jesus fills my deepest needs, I can better meet my spouse's needs. When I rely on Jesus, when I rely on him, then I can better meet the needs of my spouse. Why? Because I'm full. Because I'm not empty anymore. I'm not pouring myself out from an empty cup anymore. I'm pouring myself out in a cup that is full. You can't give what you don't have. But here's the struggle, I think, that we deal with in this world. You see, when we miss that Jesus is the one that completes us and we depend on our husband, our wife, boyfriend, or girlfriend, or we depend on moving towards that story, we then move into the other dangerous place, and that's, I don't need anybody. Right? If if, I, if relying on someone to complete me isn't working out, then, or I've been hurt, or I've, something's happened, I've been damaged, then I just don't need anybody. And some of you are actually in this place right now in your marriage. And you're saying, well, since I can't rely on my spouse anymore, I don't need anybody. I think it's why we've seen a shift in the last few years. And, and as I say these things, I want you to know I believe in these things, but I think it's a shift why we've moved a lot towards self-love. Right? Because if no one else can bring the love in that I need, I'm going to love myself. And I believe in self, right? It says in Scripture to love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? Self-care, self-love is important. But I think we moved into a space where we just said, you know, I don't need any relationships. I don't need anybody, and I'm going to stay here, and this is how I'm going to feel whole. But God didn't design us to live dependent. God designed us to live in, excuse me, I'm going to get this right, guys. It's going to happen. God designed us to live dependent on him but he did not design us to be independent of other people. And that's not just marriage relationships and dating. That's this, these relationships. 
city groups, which is where we meet in smaller groups with different people in this space. And we grow closer towards Jesus and finding out that he is the one that completes us. This is why we see 59 times in the New Testament these verses that talk about one another. Love one another. Forgive one another. So the question today for you in this room, if you're single or you're dating, what is the step that I can take? What step can I take today? Be careful if you're dating or you're single, not to rush too quickly to rely on someone before you can know them and trust them. While you're dating, understand the give and the take. And understand this, and to all my married people, you can say amen. What you experience in dating is the ceiling for your marriage. Most of the time, most of the time, right? Because when we're dating, what do we give everybody? The best. When we're married, what do we get to see in everybody? The worst. It, you got to be aware. And here's what you got to understand. If you're dating, understand this, that marriage isn't technically going to make it better. Like the general thing is it's not just going to be like, all right, we're dating. If we get married, this is going to be better. If you're in a dating relationship right now and you're like, man, this is hard. Maybe if we get married, this will help uh, pump the brakes. Pump them hard. Because you're relying on a fictional idea that if you are married, that life will be complete. And it won't. So instead of that, rely on Jesus first. And start there. If you're married, I think the risk over time is you become independent, right? We find that maybe that person in our marriage isn't completing us. And, and it's important for us to remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. And here's where we talked about math. The two shall become one flesh. This is more than just a physical relationship. This is the idea that two people are coming together through Christ, who's made them complete. They're incomplete people only made through complete through Christ, and they're becoming one. And the importance of this one and understanding this is that we are becoming a glue and we're going to avoid the drift. We're going to avoid the drift, finding the commonality together to rely on Jesus, to fill ourselves up with Christ first so that we can pour deeper into each other, so that then we can begin to rely on each other. Some of us in the room, it's become so difficult to get on the same page that you've given up and you're done. You see, distance is where separation sets up. Together is where relying sets up. And so if you're in a space and you're completely apart, you're not having conversations, you're not talking about, I mean, the simple things to rely on each other. You're not talking about your schedules. You're not getting to know, going back to that first part, we're knowing each other your finances, right? You begin to get in a space in marriage where you begin independent and then the finances change. All these things begin to, right, they move us further apart because the original thing that happened is I relied on my spouse to be the one that completes me. You'll never move towards relying better if everything you do is apart. Lastly, rely on Jesus and remind them of Jesus. Why? Why? Because Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it tells us this. In your relationships with one another, have the, main, the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Today in this room, there's a marriage where your spouse needs to rely on you to be the image of Jesus. You need to be the one that is offering forgiveness. You need to be the one that's offering grace. And there's people in this room and, and right now you're sitting in this room and your spouse isn't with you and so you feel this heaviness the marriage that God created was always meant to be a picture of Jesus in the church so right now in the moment I would encourage you to say you know what how can I point my spouse to Jesus how can they rely on me to be an image of who Jesus is so that they can find wholeness and completeness in Jesus that's how we can have the same mindset as Jesus has for relationships.